Every dream is born from a passion. Every passion generates a mission. Every mission merits perpetuation. We understand this process linkage. Created solutions for financial stability and management. Built a company for your dream's fulfillment. Spring Rain Global Consultancy Incorporated. Like rain during springtime, we nourish your dream that it be filled with life. We evaluate your financial capacity at the starting line. We improve your financial literacy over time. We generate your financial blueprint along the way. Help improve projects that are underway. Develop new strategies for financial balance to be attained. Find you, philanthropic partners, who wish your mission be generously sustained. Spring Rain Global Consultancy Incorporated. Nourishing your dream to fruition and regeneration. Spring Rain Global Consultancy is a social enterprise answering a critical social need. Religious organizations, schools, and other nonprofit social purpose organizations have good causes and values and valid social missions, but they lack awareness, support, and ultimately sustainability. Thus, their programs run the risk of getting discontinued should there be a crisis or a sudden change in leadership. Springer and Global addresses this critical social need through innovation, the SRG Six Pillar PDO Capacitation Model. Strengthening leadership and governance within the organization. Crafting the organization's vision, mission and goals and their guideposts in every action they undertake. Sharpening their advocacies and enhancing their program development and management systems to ensure that they are truly answering the needs of their constituents and communities. Organizing philanthropic development offices to grow awareness and consistent, reliable support base for the advocacies and programs. Developing financial roadmaps to help them attain sustainability and constancy in mission. Valuing the importance of data in monitoring and assessing impact of their programs and developing and nurturing their relationships with partners and donors. Connecting them with each other and to donors through an ecosystem of good so they can work collectively, share resources, learn from each other, and ultimately maximize their impact and hopefully achieve their development goals. We are a value-oriented team comprised of all types of professionals with different areas of expertise, including but not limited to experienced social development workers, registered financial consultants, certified fundraising managers, and business and marketing consultants. We all work together with a common mission of creating a greater good in every community in which we serve. Innovative in our approach, we provide the tools and create systems to help organizations stay true to their visions, scale up in their missions, and impact more beneficiaries. We partner with non-government and civic organizations, religious congregations, schools, and corporations, and organize them into philanthropic development offices individually and collectively. We journey with our PDOs, empowering them to maximize their social impact and sustain their mission. Through training and consultancy services, utilizing the power of the digital medium to reach more organizations in need of support, we adapt our services to the available resources, manpower, and financial capabilities of our various clients. Full consultancy services with access to all basic and orientation trainings plus regular coaching and consultancy sessions. Access to basic trainings only. On-call consultancy. Customized or extensive trainings. 
and retainership. Fund facilitation services linking our clients to our network of philanthropists, corporations, and grant-making organizations. AVPN, WINGS, National University Singapore Society Club, Isla Ventures, Global Impact Investing Network, AlphaTech, Global Solutions Inc., and Indiana University Indianapolis Fundraising School. Our other services include outsource services, graphics and design, grant writing and solicitation letter writing, event management, video production, and website design and management. Though diverse in experiences, all of us here in Springwind Global are devoted to one call to break cycles of poverty in all its forms. We believe that systemic change can only occur if the smallest development player who works at the very grassroots of society is empowered. In our ecosystem of good, we believe that the right people and organizations will come for the same purpose we are all called. And that is to achieve our ultimate goal of sustainability, thus supporting the various advocacies, promoting the social impact of our collective efforts together. A PDO is a philanthropic development office we consider as the basic unit of the ecosystem where we professionalize the direct link between donors and beneficiaries. It will institutionalize and create transparency, good stewardship of resources, monitor impact of their programs, create advocacy impact so that in the holistic part of it, it's not just only about the money, but it's also the stewardship of the utilization of this money that is supporting the mission of these charities. We are also trying to build an ecosystem of different philanthropic development offices because it is only in the ecosystem that we will be able to sustain our growth together. We see that this PDO thing, this whole ecosystem, social commerce and crypto philanthropy is the best way forward towards sustainability. Not only for the foundation itself, but also for the beneficiaries who eventually be the ones to receive whatever benefits that the foundation will be receiving. And of course, ultimately the other PDOs also all over the country. It has helped us to identify our funding needs, especially for the sick, with the help and guidance that they are giving. Our ministry to the sick is now more organized, more efficient, and systematic. They have been doing their best to assist us and to work from where we are so that we could truly function as such. One thing that Spring Rain was able to help us and has been going on until now is really connecting a lot of people, and not only here in the Philippines, but also in abroad. They have given us the, the right mindset, the skill set, and the tool set that we need in order to establish our office and to raise funds for our apostolate in education. It was very chaotic <laughs> before Spring Rain. We were just scrambling and trying to figure things out where Spring Rain came and gave us the technology on how to run it properly. We had departments roles and it was an organized machine where it's just like a business or any entity that it would function on its own even if one person's not there or the president is not there the foundation is constantly moving and functioning for the new PDOs the resources that you have will be maximized because of the system that spring rain will teach you and will share with you the system has helped us how to pull resources how to manage the fund, how also to manage our advocacies, our activities and program, how to sustain it and plans 
are being done for its continuity. I would like to invite you to engage with Spring Rain and help the people, your community, more with the system. Without the system, it will block succession. If you have the right skillful people without the system, then it cannot sustain long enough. If you have a system without the right people, then you miss the opportunity of maximizing the whole process. There's a lot of donor fatigue that is happening right now. And it's not because they don't want to give. It's about being annoyed by the manner of asking. It's actually the manner of the way we are communicating with the donor. The perennial problem that we have been encountering is the problem of sustainability. Partly because we haven't nourished and nurtured relationships with our different benefactors all these years. That's why I see the great potential that once we are able to connect and to nurture our relationship with our donors and eventually make their donation, make their giving more of a happy experience, then probably things will be better so that it doesn't become a linear type of relationship, but it becomes a mutual kind of relationship. When the donor gives, he is happy. He is happy because he was able to give. And of course, he is happy that he is being regularly updated by the happenings and the updates of the foundation itself. We are able to see more people who are really not only business driven, but deep inside, they want to make their businesses even more meaningful they are finding meaning on giving impact to the lives of others. It ignites more our desire to do mission, to expand our mission. We are very excited to continue doing it and to be more serious about it. It takes a way to really study them and learn about how these donors need to get motivated, get involved, so that the fatigue that is happening will turn into a transformation of partnership, love, generosity, and it will create a very wonderful family in the world of finance.
of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of mission. Totally yours, we give ourselves faithfully yours until the end. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes. Go where the sun rises. Share the word and serve those who are in need. Let the morning star accompany your way. Spread the fire of mission for the Lord. We stand before the grand horizon. Five hundred years of faith, grateful today. Justice and peace. The sign the world today will come to believe is the love we have on and on. We bear the gift of mission, mercy. Good evening, everyone, and also good morning and good afternoon to those who are joining us from the other parts of the world. Welcome to the 20, 22nd day of Spring Ring Global 45 Days Lenten Spiritual Journey and Holy Week. Reflections for the grace of the 500 years of Christianity. Before we proceed, may I request everyone to please keep your microphones on mute as soon as you log in and for the whole duration of the program to ensure the solemnity of the recollection. We also encourage you, if you feel that you have been enriched or touched somehow by this daily Lenten habit, to also invite your family and friends to join us in this spiritual journey. We are live every day via Zoom and on Facebook via the Spring Ring Global page. We will now have our opening song followed by the Spring Ring Global Prayer.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spring Rain Global Prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be called in this noble endeavor of serving people and organizations through our thrust for a deeper love for humanity and stewardship of our giftedness. As we respond to this ministry each day, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit that your wisdom may enlighten us, that your strength may remind us to stay focused in our purpose and calling, that your light be our guide at all times, and that your love be in our hearts. We know that the journey may not always be easy, but we firmly believe and hold on to your promise 
that you will be with us both in our challenges and victories as we bring love and unity to your people in service for others. We continue to pray that as we grow the mission and purpose of our Spring Rain Global Family, we may be sustained by your grace, ready to open the path for others, so that your blessings and divine providence may completely flow to each and every one of us. May we always stay in your grace, now and forever. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We will now play the national anthems of Philippines, U.S., and Singapore to signify the countries where Spring Ring Global is registered and operating. Oh, 
tonight's speaker will be guiding us in our reflection about the second beatitude of Jesus. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We will be guided in our reflection by Ms. Anne-Marie Baring, RFC, Financial Planning Pillar Head, Chief of Staff of Spring Ring Global. Good evening. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, Ms. Anne. Allow me to share my screen. Hold on now. Can you see my screen now? Yes, Miss Anne. Okay. So good evening once again from the Philippines. Good day to all of those who are watching from other parts of the world. Welcome to the Spring Wing Global 45 Days of Lenten Recollection. My name is Anne, and I'm tasked to share with you my reflection on the second beatitude, blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I am the first in the SRG team to share, and um, please know that I am a sandwich between the provincial visitor and the uh, superior general. So. Please uh, manage your expectations. Father Greg discussed last night the etymology of the word uh, beatitude. So I know that you are already familiar with it. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comfort comforted. It's a wonderful, reassuring promise. Those who mourn will be comforted. But what kind of mourning is Jesus talking about? Mourn means to show the customary signs of grief for a death, not just the loss of a loved one, but also when you are oppressed, suffering, or in pain. You weep over the sins of others. You weep for the sins of the world, for the suffering, the victims of war and terrorism and economic and social injustice. You weep today for the destruction of the environment and the horrendous loss of respect for life, all life and not just human. We define the mourner as the one being oppressed, the one who is suffering or in pain. And the confidant is the one who comforts the mourner. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Although we often associate mourning with death, the scope of this verse goes beyond finding comfort in times of loss. This second beatitude clarifies what it looks like to be poor in spirit. Jesus tells us that those who are grieved by their sin are blessed. Those who feel inadequate and empty in their faults and failures, who are driven through the grace of God, will be comforted. If we are humble and appreciate all our gifts and blessings that come from God, we grow in love and gratitude for Jesus Christ, our Savior. But this can only produce mourning and regret over our own sins and the sins of this world. For we have hurt the one who has been so good to us. One also mourns for the suffering of others.
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Have you experienced comforting someone who was in deep pain or suffering? The word mourning in the second beatitude does not only imply the loss or passing of a loved one, but also turmoils, tribulations, and oppressions we experience as a human being. Do you notice and understand when others are upset? Do you offer support when others are sad or going through a rough time? Do you show concern when you see suffering? The Beatitudes were told to us by Jesus. They show Christians how to live a blessed and moral life. They are rules to follow. Why do we have the commandments and the Beatitudes? When we follow God's commands, we will comfort others and care for them when they weep. In the Beatitudes, Jesus taught his followers how to make the reign of love a reality in our world. The Beatitudes calls Christians to the love of God and neighbor because this will enable the kingdom of God to be present on earth. They talk about the bad side of things because the kingdom is near and love is soon to reign the earth. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Those who mourn know how little they are without God. In their sorrow, they will be comforted. Their sorrow helps to see others who are worse and can move them to lend a helping hand to those who suffer. Did we offer a helping hand or a listening ear when we knew that someone is suffering or going through a rough time? Or did we shrug it off and say that I shouldn't be bothered. I don't care as long as I'm okay. My family and friends are okay. It shouldn't bother me. The opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference. The total absence of emotions. If you hate someone, it means that this person is still in your life. However, if you don't care or extend a helping hand to someone oppressed, then that is indifference. The opposite of feeling can only be the absence of it. Many people consider that anger and hatred are the worst human attributes. The truth is, indifference is an even worse human attribute because it has no emotion, no expression, and no response. Ergo, when you know of someone who is suffering or going through a turmoil, you need to be there for that person, maybe not to give unsolicited advice, but just to be there and be present at that moment. This is how we should be as a Christian, just as Jesus has always been there for us. Those who mourn will be comforted. My experience back in uh, 2019, when my dog Gigi crossed the Rainbow Bridge, 
I was traveling for work. We were in Sagay City, Negros Occidental, having a meeting when I received a call from my mother. It was just two days after we left Cebu. I went back to the meeting still crying, and I clearly remember Father Irwin, now Monsignor Irwin, Magnano said, in Tagalog, denun talaga. And he just sat beside me, saying nothing. While we were attending the meeting that was about to end. I couldn't help but cry silently until the meeting ended. Glenda asked me if I wanted to go home ahead of them, but I said no, because we still have two more days to finish all the meetings that was set. Besides, I couldn't do anything to bring back my dog. Gigi was my first dog. She was with us for 12 years. Why am I sharing this? It doesn't mean that I didn't experience any oppression after that. That was almost three years ago. What I want to point out are the words Father Irwin uttered. Because he could have said, move on, it's only a dog, it's not the end of the world, get over it. You know, oftentimes when people open up or confide to us, we give unsolicited advice when all they want is someone to listen to them or just sit beside them through that painful time. More often than not, we add insult to injury. Sometimes I'm guilty of this, especially if a friend confides a perennial problem with a very obvious solution. There are times when we rejoice, but we also experience times of mourning, even extended seasons of grieving. We mourn for many reasons, human suffering, the loss of a loved one, broken relationships, the persistence of our sins. Such sadness prepares us to receive God's kingdom. In fact, through Isaiah, God promised that the Messiah would comfort those who mourn. Because Jesus was anointed to usher in God's kingdom, those who mourn were blessed because comfort was on the way. Yet, until the fullness of the kingdom comes to us, we will still grieve. The tragedies of life will at times weigh heavenly upon our hearts, but in our grief, we have hope for the future. We also have the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who meets us in sorrow and calms our hearts. When you grieve, you bring your sadness to God. Then you experience the comfort of God's spirit in your life. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalm 147, verse 3. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, verse 18. During the general audience in 2020, 
the Pope reflected on the second beatitude. He said, it is important to weep out of contrition, not out of pride. The Pope said, there are two types of sorrow. One is the pain one feels in front of other people's suffering. The other is the mourning for one's sins. In our continuing catechesis on the Beatitudes, we now turn to the second proclamation. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Such mourning, described by the Desert Fathers with the Greek word penthos, is more than mere grief. It is an interior sorrow that can open us to an authentic relationship with the Lord and with each other. The Bible speaks of two types of sorrow. The first is the pain we feel when faced with the suffering or death of our brothers and sisters. The second involves mourning for sin. Both are grounded in loving concern for others, but above all, in love for God. Sorrow for sin, as seen in St. Peter's tears after his betrayal of Jesus, comes as a gift of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Let us continually ask for the grace to grieve for our sins and to be open to the healing grace of the Spirit so that when we comfort others with the same consolation that we ourselves have received. End of Pope Francis' reflection. There are many passages in the Bible that speaks about mourning. Some I shared earlier in my previous slides. This one is coming from Isaiah chapter 31, 61, verse one to three. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes a joyous blessing instead of mourning. Festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. This is the promise that Jesus has for all of us. This beautiful beatitude proclaims blessed those who are able to mourn for the suffering they see and feel around them. Those who, when faced with suffering, overcome the temptation of indifference and are ready to share the pain, the violence, the injustice, and the poverty we see all around us are a call to open our hearts and let this suffering touch us. During the time of Typhoon Odette, when there was no water, electricity, there was a shortage of the 
basic necessities. Uh, we live at the heart of the city and we are very near to um, seven hospitals, four of which are just wa walking distance from where we live. That's the reason why we had our electricity back about a week after the typhoon. So those seven days, we were in distress as we couldn't sleep. It was very uncomfortable. No aircon, no electric fan, no internet, no cold water, etc. So when the electricity was finally back, we were so happy. But I also thought about others who are still suffering due to the typhoon. I decided to offer a little sacrifice for them to be in solidarity with them by not using the aircon as long as I can. And true enough, I didn't turn it on until January 28th in time for the financial planning forum. That was after a month and four days after the electricity was back. We are invited to mourn, to feel distress at so much pain and inconveniences in the world. This is a real choice for we know how easily we run away or think of something else. We know how it feels to be too much to handle. That is why we shouldn't be indifferent to the people around us, but rather be sensitive to their needs and longings. How can you be happy when your brothers are not? Jesus wept when he stood outside the tomb of his friend, Lazarus. He always allowed the sufferings of others to touch him, sometimes even reacting without being asked, as he did when he raised the son of the widow of Naim. Jesus reacted because he cared. He wasn't passive. He also wept when he could foresee Jerusalem's destruction brought about by her refusal to accept him. We too live in a world that sounds so proud at being able to do without God. The Gospel of John is the clearest treatise on the divine nature of Jesus, but it is the most profound book with the human side of Jesus, openly revealed in his earthly nature. Death made God cry. Lazarus had died and Mary and Martha had grieved his death as they entombed their brother behind the solid rock. They had not understood why Jesus delayed when told of the impending death of Lazarus. Jesus had healed so many and they hoped through his divine hand, Lazarus would be spared. They watched in grief as Lazarus died and then prepared his burial garments, binding him head and foot. Jesus arrived on the fourth day to a home filled with tears, sorrow, and great loss. The heart of Jesus was crushed under the weight of the human frailty of life. Jesus groaned 
as he approached the tomb of Lazarus. Death has so many tentacles that reach the heart with its darkness of grief and sorrow. There was nothing more John could write but the profound words that when Jesus approached the tomb of Lazarus, he cried. It is hard to envision the image of the divine weeping tears. The sting of death reached the throne of God and made tears flow upon the face of God's son. He understands, he knows, he weeps. They will be comforted. Jesus promises us that those who mourn will be comforted. When our heart mourns, we will discover that while we cannot eliminate all the suffering in the world, our efforts do make a difference. This brings us real consolation, for we know we are being true to ourselves. It is Jesus' promise that whatever we give up, we will receive back a hundredfold even in this world. Moreover, we discover that we are not alone in this. As Jesus wept at Lazarus' tomb and over his beloved Jerusalem, he is also present with us, mourning and suffering alongside those who suffer and inspiring and supporting those who reach out to him. When we share in life, we share both love and pain, the good times and the bad times. We get times to comfort and times to be comforted. We are comforted on a number of levels. We may surround ourselves with people who can love us and care for us. We learn to self-comfort, knowing what we need as individuals to best look after ourselves. We are also able to rely on Jesus' words that we will be comforted. Sometimes life is easy and we don't feel like we need God. But in other times, when we feel like we have lost everything, that is when we can feel embraced by God. That is where the blessing lies. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This broader understanding of grief fits into the message of all the Beatitudes. Poor in spirit, meek, merciful, peacemakers, hunger and thirst for injustice and persecuted for justice. Even the pure in heart is about more than personal holiness. Throughout the Beatitudes, Jesus asked us to focus beyond ourselves and to see our place in God's plan for the world. We are blessed when we mourn. Our absence from God's presence. When we mourn that we are not in paradise, not in the kingdom of heaven. 
this morning creates holy desire within us. And this is very blessed and very happy indeed. Of all the paradoxes in the Beatitudes, this is the most dramatic. It's an astonishing thing to speak of the joy in sorrow, of the gladness in grief, and of the bliss of the brokenhearted. Jesus was called a man of sorrows because he understood the destructive nature of sin and evil. Yet, it was with joy that was set before him that gave him the strength to endure the cross. Jesus knew that his suffering would both purchase our salvation and please his Father. This gave him a great joy and purpose. If we believe that God's grace and sovereignty are greater than any loss or disappointment, we too can experience joy in the midst of sorrow. We may not understand why God always allows tragedy to strike, but we can rest in his infinite wisdom and tender mercies. One look at Jesus' suffering on the cross, we know he understands our pain. In the end, we weep for the losses in our lives, the loss of our loved ones. We weep for our suffering and pain and that of others. We weep over our sins. We weep over the sins of the world. We weep with longing for God's kingdom. Whether you have suffered, are suffering, or one day will suffer, you can take comfort in knowing that our crucified God will be there in the midst of it. We will be comforted by the God of all comfort. Let us now pause for some reflection. The points for reflection. Jesus has always been there for us in times of pain, trials, and tribulations. Did you, as a Christian, extend a helping hand or a listening ear? To anyone who tried to reach out to you? Or did you just ignore those who are suffering and afflicted because it does not involve you, so you shouldn't be bothered? Second, how can you show mercy and compassion to those who are mourning? And third, recall a time when you reach out to someone and that person willingly listened to you 
and helped you. In return, did you reciprocate that act of compassion? Or did you walk away because you have your own troubles to face?
ada kuah baru saya ini di hyper meat And now for our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, please wrap your arms around those who are hurting today. Let them feel your love and be comforted in your arms. I am utterly grateful to you for creating me and for holding me closer to you. Thank you for acknowledging my pain and for assuring me that this too shall pass. I humbly ask you to bless, guide, and protect my loved ones and to give me strength for whatever trials and tribulations ahead. This I ask in Jesus' mighty name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miss Anne, for your reflection and sharing. It means that people who are suffering will be taken care of by the Lord. 
Those who mourn speaks of those who express deep sorrow over sin and repent from their sins. The freedom found in forgiveness of sin and the joy of eternal salvation is a comfort of those who, who repent. When you know of someone who is suffering or going through a different, difficult time, you need to be there for that person, maybe not to give unsolicited advice, but just to be there and be present at that moment. This is how we should be as a Christian, just as Jesus has always been there for us. There are times when we rejoice, but we also experience times of mourning, even extended seasons of grieving. We mourn for many reasons, human suffering, the loss of loved ones, broken relationships, the persistence of our sin. Blessed are those who mourn for their sins, for they shall receive forgiveness and life eternal. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. May we request everybody to turn on their cameras for our picture taking. Hey, open your cameras and show your beautiful smile. One, two, three. Let's go change it. One, two, three, smile. Another one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clay. Please join us again tomorrow. 8 p.m. Philippine time here at Zoom or live via the Spring Rain Global Facebook page for the 23rd day Lenten Spiritual Journey and Holy Week. Reflection for the grace of the 500 years of Christianity. Tomorrow's topic is the third Beatitude of Jesus. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. By Sister Flor Duran, Carm OL, PDO Director, of Carmel Development Center, PDR. We hope that you will invite your family and friends and together let us nurture our faith, love and devotion to the Lord as we play our closing song. We bid good night to everybody watching from the Philippines and good day to all those watching from other parts of the world. Thank you and see you tomorrow. May God bless us all.
Thank you po. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Hi, Sister Nida. Congrats, Maman. Nice kayo.